What's up, y'all? I'm Bella D. We're right here on the Blockout Podcast, another week back at Books for Crooks. And I'm going to be reading to you a very famous book, The Four Agreements. And today I'm going to be reading to you The Second Agreement. Don't take anything personally, really. I'm going to remind you in this one. The next three agreements are really born from the first agreement. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. Whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Using an earlier example, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, you're so stupid without knowing you, it's not about you, it's about me. If you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you're stupid. Maybe you think to yourself, how does he know? Is he clairvoyant or can everybody see how stupid I am? You take it personally because you agree with whatever was said. As soon as you agree, the poison goes through you and you are trapped in the dream of hell. What causes you to be trapped is what we call personal importance. Personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. During the period of our education or our domestication, we learn to take everything personally. We think we are responsible for everything. Me, 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 always me. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are in a completely different world from the one we live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world on their world. Even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements they have made in their own minds. Their point of view comes from all the programming they receive during domestication. If someone gives you an opinion and says, hey, you look so fat, don't take it personally, because the truth is that this person is dealing with his or her own feelings, beliefs, and opinions. That person tried to send poison to you, and if you take it personally, then you take that poison and it becomes yours. Taking things personally makes you easy prey for those predators, the black magicians. They can hook you easily with one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want. And because you take it personally, you eat it up. You eat up all their emotional garbage and now it becomes your garbage. If you do not take it personally, you are immune in the middle of hell. Immunity to poison in the middle of hell is the gift of this agreement. When you take things personally, then you feel offended and your reaction is to defend your beliefs and create conflicts. You make something big out of something so little because you have the need to be right and make everyone else wrong. You also try to be right about giving them your own opinions. In the same way, whatever you feel and do is just a protection of your own personal dream, a reflection of your own agreements. What you say, what you do, and the opinions you have according to the agreements you have made, these opinions have nothing to do with me. It is not important to me what you think about me, and I don't take what you think personally. I don't take it personally when people say, Miguel, you are the best. And I also don't take it personally when they say, Miguel, you are the worst. I know that when you are happy, you will tell me, Miguel, you're such an angel. And when you're mad at me, you'll say, oh, Miguel, you're such a devil. You are so disgusting. How can you say these things? Either way, it doesn't affect me because I know what I am. I don't have the need to be accepted. I don't have the need to have someone tell me, Miguel, you're doing so good, or how dare you do that? No, I don't take it personally. Whatever you think, whatever you feel, I know your problem is not my problem, and is the same way you see the world. It is nothing personal because you are dealing with yourself, not with me. Others are going to have their own opinion according to their belief system, so nothing you think about me is actually about me, but but it is about them. You may even tell me, Miguel, What you're saying is hurting me, but it's not what I'm saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I touch by what I have said. You're hurting yourself. There is no way that I can take this personally, not because I don't believe in you or don't trust you, but because I know that you see the world with different eyes, with your eyes. You create an entire picture or movie in your mind, and in that picture you are the main director, you are the producer, you are the main actor or actress. Everyone else is a secondary actor or actress. It is your movie. The way you see that movie is according to the agreements you have made with your life. Your point of view is something personal to you. It is no one's truth but yours. 
Then, if you get mad at me, I know you're dealing with yourself. I'm the excuse for you to get mad. And you get mad because you're afraid, because you're dealing with fear. If you're not afraid, there is no way you will get mad at me. If you're not afraid, there is no way you will hate me. If you are not afraid, there is no way you will be jealous or sad. If you live without fear, if you love, there is no place for any of these emotions. If you don't feel any of those emotions, it is logical that you will feel good. When you feel good, everything around you is good. When everything around you is great, everything makes you happy. You are loving everything that is around you because you are loving yourself, because you like the way you are, because you are content with you, because you are happy with your life. You're happy with the movie that you're producing, happy with your agreements with life. You are at peace, you are happy. You live in the state of bliss where everything is wonderful and everything is so beautiful. In that state of bliss, you are making love all the time with everything that you perceive. Whatever people do, think, feel, or say, don't take it personally. If they tell you how wonderful you are, you are they are not saying that because of you. You know you're wonderful. It is not necessary to believe other people who tell you that you are wonderful. Don't take anything personally. Even if someone got a gun and shot you in the head, it was nothing personal, even that, in that extreme. Even the opinions you have about yourself are not necessarily true. Therefore, you don't need to take whatever you hear in your own mind personally. The mind has the ability to talk to itself, but it also has the ability to, to hear information that is available from other dreams. Sometimes you hear a voice in your mind and you may wonder where it came from. This voice may have come from another reality in which these are living things very similar to the human mind. The Toltecs called these beings allies. In Europe, Africa, and India, they call them gods. Our mind also exists in the level of the gods. Our mind also lives in that reality that can perceive that reality. The mind sees with the eyes and perceives this waking reality, but the mind also sees and perceives without the eyes. Although the reason is hardly aware of this perception, the mind lives in more than one dimension. There may be times when you have ideas that don't originate in your mind, but you are perceiving them with your mind. You have the right to believe or not believe these voices and the right to not take what they say personally. We have a choice whether or not to believe the voices we hear within our own minds, just as we have a choice of what to believe and agree with in the dream of the planet. The mind can also talk and listen to itself. The mind is divided as your body is divided, just as you say, I have one hand and I can shake my other hand and feel the other hand. The mind can talk to itself. Part of the mind is speaking and the other part is listening. It is a big problem when a thousand parts of your mind are speaking at the same time. This is called a mitote, remember? The mitote can be compared to a huge marketplace where thousands of people are talking and battering at the same time. Each one has different thoughts and feelings. Each one has a different point of view. The programming in the mind, all of those agreements we have made are not necessarily compatible with each other. Every agreement is like a separate living being. It has its own personality and its own voice. There are conflicting agreements that go against other agreements and on and on until it becomes a big war in the mind. The mitote is the reason humans hardly know what they want, how they want it, and when they want it. They don't agree with themselves because there are parts of the mind that want one thing and other parts that want exact opposite. Some part of the mind has objections to certain thoughts and actions and other part supports the actions of the opposing thoughts. All these little living beings create inner conflict because they are alive and they each have a voice. Only by making inventory of our own agreements will we uncover all the conflicts in our mind and eventually make order out of all the chaos of the mitote. Don't take anything personally because by taking things personally, you set yourself up to suffer for nothing. Humans are addicted to suffering at different levels to different degrees and we support each other in maintaining these addictions. Humans agree to help each other suffer. If you have the need to be abused, you will find it easy to be abused by others. Likewise, if you are with people who need to suffer, something in you makes you abuse them. It is as if they have a note on their back that says, please kick me. They are asking for justification for their suffering. Their addiction to suffering is nothing but an agreement that is reinforced every day. Wherever you go, you find people lying to you. 
And as your awareness grows, you will notice that you also lie to yourself. Do not expect people to tell you the truth because they also lie to themselves. You have to trust yourself and choose to believe or not to believe what someone tells you. When we really see other people as they are without taking it personally, we can never be hurt by what they say or do. Even if others lie to you, it is okay. They are lying to you because they are afraid. They are afraid you will discover that they are not perfect. It is painful to take the social mask off. If others say one thing but do another, you are lying to yourself if you don't listen to their actions. But if you are truthful with yourself, you will save yourself a lot of emotional pain. Telling yourself the truth about it may hurt, but you don't need to be attached to the pain. Healing is on the way and it's just a matter of time before things will be better for you. If someone is not treating you with love and respect, it is a gift if they walk away from you. If that person doesn't walk away, you will surely endure many years of suffering with him or her. Walking away may hurt for a while, but your heart will eventually heal. Then you can choose what you really want. You will find that you don't need to trust others as much as you need to trust yourself to make the right choices. When you make it a strong habit not to take anything personally, you avoid many aspects in your life. Your anger, jealousy, and envy will disappear. Even your sadness will simply disappear if you don't take things personally. If you can make this second agreement a habit, you will find that nothing can put you back into hell. There is a huge amount of freedom that comes to you when you take nothing personally. If you become immune to black magicians, and no spell can affect you regardless of how strong it may be. The whole world can gossip about you, and if you don't take it personally, you're immune. Someone can intentionally send you emotional poison, and if you don't take it personally, you will not eat it. When you don't take the emotional poison, it becomes even worse in the sender, but not in you. You can see how important this agreement is. Taking nothing personally helps you break many habits and routines that trap you in the dream of hell and cause needless suffering. Just by practicing the second agreement, you begin to break dozens of teeny tiny agreements that cause you to suffer. And if you practice the first two agreements, you will break 75% of teeny tiny agreements that keep you trapped in hell. Write this agreement on paper and put it on your refrigerator to remind yourself all the time. Don't take anything personally. If you make a habit of not taking anything personally, you won't need to place your trust in what others do or say. You will only need to trust yourself to make responsible choices. You are never responsible for the actions of others. You are only responsible for you. When you truly understand this and refuse to take things personally, you can hardly be hurt by the careless comments or actions of others. If you keep this agreement, you can travel around the world with your heart completely open and no one can hurt you. You can say, I love you, without fear of being ridiculed or rejected. You can ask for what you need. You can say yes or you can say no, whatever you choose, without guilt or self-judgment. You can choose to follow your heart always. Then you can be in the middle of hell and still experience inner peace and happiness. You can stay in your state of bliss and hell will not affect you at all. Don't take anything personally. This book is a trip. If you apply this to your life, you see a difference. You gotta follow it. You gotta be paying attention. Don't take it personally. Don't take nothing personally. I'm gonna leave the link to this book in the description right here so you can find it. So thank you and we'll see you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.